I said it, we're gonna start over. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. We'll edit it in the microphone here. <laughs> Let's pretend this just happened already. Our next storyteller may be the only disabled Chinese comedian working in America. Yeah. We first met him here at the shout, and after a couple of post-show drinks, we decided to have him back as a feature. Please mate, welcome Steve Lee. Yeah. Um, I'm on the show because I brought him a couple of drinks, so <laughs> that's probably worth it. I was I was born and raised in Hong Kong, and um, I when I was born, um, but the doctor and nurses was like this guy looks a little different. Uh, at the time, my mom and dad they were immigrants. They moved to Hong Kong. Hong Kong was a British colony and my parents uh, moved from China and they knew nothing about disability and um, they thought they could heal me so they went to a doctor uh, went back to China and looked for all kinds of doctors and most of them was telling them just put me in a trash dump or um, the nice ones were told me um, told them to give, him up, give me up for the orphanage and the, it was hard for them, and it was hard for me for a while. And then every, every time people kind of ask me, hey, uh, you can't walk, but you know, you have little weird hands here and there. I just told people, hey, look, I'm not disabled or anything, it's just that all my arms and legs remain in China. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Joking about myself is all right. It's all right. <laughs> because life is tougher than that one two line jokes. Because it's not about how people look at you or how I look at myself. Or it's really about how you can move on in your life. How you can survive just like everybody else. I want to go to a bar and talk to a pretty girl, just like everybody. There's this fair, no good looking, not good looking. I want to go to a uh, workplace to get the same salary. It's fair, you know, I might have my own disadvantage. I have, might have my advantage, like I can park everywhere. <laughs> so I'll never be late. <laughs> and uh, I remember public transportation. I was I grew up in Hong Kong, and when I was like eight or nine, I couldn't walk upstairs by myself. And my mom has been kind of like holding me, walking up on stairs a little bit at a time. And the older I get, my mom told me, like, I have to learn how to walk on stairs by myself. Um, so, you know, that's the only, the only way I, had, I, 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 had, I went to school was I had to take a school bus. Because I had to go to a school for the disabled. And because no normal school at the time wanted to accept me, because they afraid I will, you know, uh, my family would sue them if I fell down or anything like that. So. Uh, the school was really far, and there was a bridge that I had to cross to get to the subway, and then get to my school bus station. And the stair was it was really high; it was like two floors high, and it was in the middle of the financial district. And I couldn't walk upstairs. The only way I could walk upstairs by myself was I had to sit on every step and push myself backward like that in the middle of the financial financial district. Everybody was looking at me like, you know, sitting on the step, walk, you know, move, moving my butt up and one at a time. And then they were wondering, some of them were wondering, like, this kid's butt must really itch. <laughs> but, you know, I, I kind of forgot what happened. Because for me, that was life. 
Um, after two, three years, I could kind of start walking slowly up on the stairs by myself. But at that period of my life, I forgot about it totally until I was invited to talk about my story, my story about my disability, and that's how, uh, how, how the society back then treat me. And, and then I was like, oh my God, that was huge. Like, I, wouldn't, I couldn't imagine myself doing that today. Like, you know, like how cool I am. I'm wearing these professor looking suits. <laughs> And and then I and then I was in high school. Uh, one time we had a an installation arts exhibition, and I was kind of one of those creative kids. I was like, oh my god, I'm go so gonna be famous. I'm gonna be invited by art gallery, and like you know, gonna have party with some fancy models, like those rap, rap videos, and holding rat wine on my hand, like. <laughs> So I made an artwork um, in my school for the disabled kids, and I put a sign that says, wheelchair and dogs are not allowed, and put that sign in my school's only elevators. Yeah, the wheelchair kids were pissed, first of all. And the teacher were pissed, the staff were pissed, like, what, is, what are you thinking, Steve? What's going on? Take that sign down. They never really bothered to ask me why. Um, so, you know, I had one staff. Well, my sign was up for more than, more than a few hours. Uh, the, the exhibition was supposed to last for two weeks. So one of the staff just <laughs> tore my, my artwork, uh, artwork down and just like dump it right in front of my table, in my face. And that's the whole treatment I've been getting by the school people. And I was just, nobody bothered to ask me, uh, other than the, our teacher. Basically my point was just, this is how the society treat me, or treat us, or treat people with disability. Where you couldn't go to some place because, because it costs too much to build an elevator. Because it costs too much to change the whole bus line with ramp, with, you know, uh, assist, uh, wheelchair assist, accessibility equipment. And the society was just basically telling us, well, this life, I'm sorry. Just learn how to accommodate. And the people at the school, they could tolerate what happened to their life. They could tolerate how the whole society treat them. But not my little stupid piece of paper that says wheelchair and dogs are not allowed. So at that point I was like, well I'm done with arts. I'm going to go on stage and change people's minds one thick joke at a time. <laughs> Thank you very much.